So I want to start with a lesson on AI as translation. And this is kind of the dominant metaphor that we're going to be using to help you conceptualize what is actually happening with ChatGPT. And so what I wanted to start is with a quick video. Uh, it was one of my main AI moments. We talked about last in unit one, uh, the AI moment. It's that moment when AI just kind of blew your mind. And uh, I, my first AI moment, I was sitting uh, on a bed uh, interacting uh, about my book, you might recall. This AI moment actually came later when the co-founder of OpenAI, Greg Brockman, was introducing the new GPT-4 uh, to the marketplace. And in the middle of the live stream, he takes his notebook and scans it with his phone and uploads the picture of his joke website. This is literally my joke website, really funny joke one, push to reveal punchline, same, uh, but joke two, push to reveal punchline, copyright open AI 2023. That, that's literally all he gave them. Um, and then he gave them a prompt instructions to then actually uh, build that website. And here is that video. Uh, let me actually make sure to share sound and video and let's give it a shot. And here we go. Technology is now solved. And now we wait. So he uploaded the... So the thing that's amazing in my mind is that what's going on here is we're talking to a neural network. And this neural network was trained to predict what comes next. Right, it played this, uh, this game of, sort of being shown a partial document and then predicted what comes next across an unimaginably large amount of content. And from there, it learns all of these skills that you can apply in all of these very flexible ways. And so we can actually take now this output. So literally, we just said to output the HTML from that picture. And here we go. Actual working JavaScript filled in the jokes. For comparison, this was the original. Data is greater than numbers. The challenge is making it more. Of our mock-up. And so there you go, going from hand-drawn, beautiful art, if I do say so myself, to working website. And this is all just potential, right? We, you can see lots of different applications. We ourselves are still figuring out new ways to use this. Um, so we're going to work with our partner. We're going to scale up from there, but please be patient because it's going to take us some time to really make this available for everyone. Uh, by the way, when he says we're gonna work with our partner, he's referring to Microsoft. And uh, now is as good a time as any. Uh, I'm really excited to say that uh, in, in unit four, we're gonna have a one hour session with an engineer from Microsoft talking about their future plans for this incredible technology. So let's break that down, what we just saw. Um, what we just saw was really an act of translation. And so I wanna explain what I mean when I use the word translation. So the input was, in this case, a natural language input. It was somebody writing some words on a piece of paper. And the output, uh, was code, uh, it should say HTML, um, it coded a website. Um, and that is what ChatGPT does, is it takes natural language inputs and it outputs something that's been translated uh, into something else. And that translation can be into another language, it can be into code, it can be into just a more useful uh, or fuller version of what you asked for, it can be into an Excel spreadsheet and so forth. Now. The problem is that your job is not done. You cannot just cut and paste uh, and expect that this is going to go great. And so we, what's really happening now is our role is shifting from maybe the drafter or the creator to the editor and the debugger. And so what you noticed is he had to manually cut and paste the output into a HTML builder, and then it built uh, a reactive website, but he, the, the ChatGPT needed another tool to actually compile and build the website. And 
you know, I just noticed this as I was building the slide, but I don't know if you guys noticed there was like a little advertisement at the bottom for Squarespace. It says Squarespace sell your content with a membership site. I think this uh, this live stream has had like hundreds of thousands of views. And so Squarespace got this incredible little plug that I'm sure was not intended. But it, Squarespace is actually a perfect example of a tool that it builds simple websites using templates. So you can take the HTML uh, and load it into Squarespace and, and or another website builder like WordPress, and then you can have a website. Um, and uh, I will point out that this is another digital innovation, maybe one we don't like as much, the, the pop-up ad. So translation is at the heart of ChatGPT. And what matters most is the input, also known as the prompt. And when we talk to the Microsoft engineer, he's going to tell us that the skill of being able to write and manipulate detailed, well thought out prompts is the number one skill in the twenty in the in, in the in the in our AI future. One of the ways to think about it is like this. I, for the last 20 years, have heard that everybody needs to learn the language of coding. And so as a result, a huge cottage industry of coding boot camps have come up. I took uh, a C plus course in college. Many of you have probably gone through coding boot camps. And what's really interesting is it is possible that AI and ChatGPT is going to make those coding boot camps less significant, less important. And you're going to go more from a place where you're drafting code to a place where you need to be able to interpret code and be able to understand the architecture and the higher level structure of code. Or if you know there's an issue, how to find the bug versus coding yourself. And Jeff is a guy who codes. Jeff, is this uh, what you found? I think we talked about this, that you are now moving to a place where you're doing less original coding and more debugging and editing of code. Yeah, absolutely. In, in our company, we've gone from writing every line of code to instead asking ChatGPT to write some code that we edit, that we give feedback to, that we incorporate into the systems. But it's really transformed our workflow where we are no longer doing that initial basic level work. Instead, we are guiding those systems. And so the number, the, the, the money that Jeff is saving is the time. Uh, and the value of that time. And frankly, it's our most powerful and valuable commodity. And this is good for coding, but it's also good for sales emails. It's good for brainstorming marketing ideas. It's great for blog writing, which is one of the areas Nicole specializes in. It's really good for automating business processes. Um, you can use a chat bot to handle customer engagement. There's just an unending uh, number of ways this tool can be used. And the skill of prompting is the key one to be able to unlock it. And it all starts with that input, with the prompt. And we're gonna cover very shortly here how to write a prompt. It, it, there's an art and a science to it. But before that, we wanted to do a little bit of eat your spinach nerdy stuff with our resident white guy tech nerd, uh, Jeff. Um, listen, it's okay that you're white. It's, it is what it is. But we know that um, one of the issues that we highlight with uh, AI is the inherent bias, the, the structural bias that comes with most of the people who are the engineers and the employees of these companies are wealthy white men in the US and Europe. And so we're gonna just, oh, be, we need to be aware of that. Um, it causes a lot of it problems with facial recognition. And because of the computing power, that tools like ChatGPT require access to them in the, in the developing world is limited. And so it really matters a lot. Uh, there's very significant implications about the fact that it's uh, wealthy US, European, and increasingly Chinese companies that are building this because that changes what is built and influences who can access it. <laughs> 